Well, how do you fetch the MIDs from the message tracking logs? Well, I know you know how to do it from the GUI, but by the end of the video, I'll show you something that you cannot do from the uh, monitor, message tracking logs, and then you won't have that option to search. But from uh, uh, here, using the uh, REST API, um, using curl, Python, whatever, uh, you can go ahead and uh, search that way as well. Well, let's just discuss the script real quick. We're looking at um, importing requests, JSON and pprint to make it look beautiful. Now we have the URL, make sure that it's, uh, this is the IP address of your ESA. And if you're not dealing with the ESA, then make sure you put the IP address of your SMA. So I'm just, uh, you know, I was just playing, uh, playing around with these two values and therefore I have it this way. So uh, I'm using 6080, uh, which is I'm using HTTP access to my ESA. The rest of the stuff can be um, fetched from uh, the REST API guide. And then uh, the values that you have to supply to the script would include the start date, which is right here. So this is the attribute uh, question mark, and then this. Now, the start date, you mention it as 22, 2020, whatever you want to put in there uh, according to your requirement. The end date, uh, these two things are important to mention to get the correct results. Uh, Cisco host, all hosts, well, you'll get this from the REST API guide again. And then you have uh, the search option. What do you want to search for? Messages, offset zero, limit 100. When we talk about the limit, um, you cannot actually exceed 100. So if you go for 101, it'll give you errors. So yeah, that's uh, one of the drawbacks that I that I was able to find in this one. But well, the only thing, the other thing is that let's say, uh, okay, now you might come up to me and say that, hey, uh, we have a limit on this of 100, um, while as from the GUI, we don't have a limit of 100. Well, uh, using the REST API as well, um, you can go ahead and uh, fetch all the other MIDs as well be 200, 300, or even way more than what you can get from the GUI uh, quickly. Well, you can get all of them from the GUI, obviously, but uh, what I'm saying is uh, using a script, if you if you put up a logic, um, uh, which, for example, changes the dates. Uh, first, it's gonna search for one date. Let's say, for example, the start date and the end date, end date has a gap of just one a day. And then let's say you change it, you loop it, uh, you loop this particular value and then you're able to basically go ahead and fetch MIDs from every other date as well. That way you can get the MIDs from uh, all the um, all the days that you're looking for. So there's really no limitation. It really depends on how you program it. Uh, once you have this URL set up, make sure that you put in the headers out of, as I've explained in uh, one of my previous videos. How do you do this basic authentication? Where do you get this value? And the cookie as well. And then you have the response variable where you're uh, making the request. Well, this one's a get request. The URL in this case is from the ESA. I've commented out the URL uh, for the SMA uh, that I'm using in my lab. And you have the headers, which contains the authorization and the cookie. Verify equals false, which makes sure that it does not try to verify the certificate. And then you have JSON underscore string, in which I'm trying to load. Um, the response content, and uh, this is how I get the JSON object out of it. And uh, then I'm uh, just creating a list to make sure that I save um, the MIDs inside this list, whatever options I get from there. And also another thing that this editor is Sublime Text. Um, we can go ahead and use Sublime Text to run our Python code as well. Well, you have to um, install a script or dependency, or whatever. There's a there's a way to get it done. You can just Google it. Uh, real quick, that's not a problem. Now, then you have uh, uh, the other stuff, which is just something that I did to make it look nice and get more details out of it. Now, uh, to run it, I'll just go ahead and uh, run Control B. B is in Bravo, and there you go. It's giving me all the information. The MIDs and the message uh, message tracking logs for the given time range are this, 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 and so on. Great. So uh, total MIDs fetched 100, and that's pretty much it. That's what I get from the length right here. And from this one, I get uh, the MIDs list. Now you might come up to me and say, hey, what's going on here? The first one has two values, so it has two MIDs. What's going on here? Now, um, 
Okay, let me tell you what. Uh, let me show you the output directly. Okay, so as an example, this is what we get as the output of um, uh, of the script that we're running, except that I'm just fetching the MIDs, but right now here I'm printing the complete JSON object, which gives me all this information. And then I fetch the MID value from that, and therefore we just see this much in our uh, output. Okay, so let me just go ahead and show you what I mean when I mentioned uh, two MIDs in a single one. So what we have here is, for example, if I scroll up to the top of this output, or it should be somewhere in the middle, but that's okay. It's completely fine. Now, for example, this one right here. Okay, now this message, as you see, it has two parts, 1947 and 2006. Uh, we should see it somewhere in, in, in the output that we got before, right? Now, what do we have here? Uh, 1947 for iron port report content filter scheduled report now this was the report um, that that I have uh, I have actually scheduled uh, to be sent to my appliance well the ESA was not able to get it done and therefore another message another email was generated based on that that's a notification email and this one shows a failure for uh, the message 1947 so 2006 shows the failure for 1947 and therefore 2006 was generated for that. And that's the reason that you see two values inside um, a single uh, list uh, element. And uh, for the others, for example, you see just one in which there were no problems in delivering the email and uh, yeah, just one. Now, for example, uh, sometimes you see uh, two, three, four, five, six, or sometimes 10 as well, MIDs um, uh, for a single email generated due to disclaimers, um, due to footers or whatever. Well, that's a disclaimer. Anyways, uh, due to other problems, bounces or whatever. In that case, you'll see multiple um, entries even after uh, the comma. So, so here you see 1953 comma 2012 and then you'll see comma and then so on other MIDs as well in this way. Well, uh, let me show you one good thing that you can actually get from this script that you won't be able to get. Um, you won't be able to get it done from uh, the GUI directly. Let me show you what, we do, what I'm talking about. Okay, so um, here I'm using the same exact script, except that I've added just a couple more lines in here. Um, in the in this function that I, I was using before, uh, I'm saying if empty subject in JSON string data num attributes and then subject, if the subject of the email was empty, if there was nothing in the subject, then go ahead and print the JSON string, blah, 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 subject as well. And only then go ahead and, you know, append the MID to the list that we were talking about before. So what am I talking about? Here in the previous output, we saw that total MIDs fetched were 100, 100, and we did not see anything apart from all this, right? Now, if I go ahead and run this now, let me just uh, run Control B again. Well, this time we'll see the subject as well, and we'll see that okay, no, not a hundred, but okay, 93 only. So 93 uh, out of those hundred emails were uh, had um, an empty subject, so it did not have a subject out of the hundred that we're trying to fetch information for, and only those MIDs are appended to this list that we're talking about, right? And it's also fetching me the subject for it, which is basically shown as empty subject uh, from the REST API, uh, from the API that we're trying to fetch it from. Well, this option is really not available uh, from the GUI. You can't do it that way. So this is a good advantage. Now, apart from this, I also showed you the other output that you get from uh, the script, right? This is... Um, uh, one of the JSON objects, um, uh, this is from uh, the JSON object that we saw before. So you have these two values. If I don't want to fetch the subject, for example, uh, which you see right here, empty subject, uh, you can fetch other information as well, the serial number, sender's IP, and whatnot. So whatever is available, you can fetch all that information from there, right? So it, it's a very powerful tool. You can use it to fetch um, and you know make sure to manipulate your script in such a way that you can uh, fetch uh, bigger outputs uh, very quickly. So this really helps. Um, you can give it a shot, try different things than what I tried, and uh, yeah.
go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, I think um, we're good with this one. I've already covered a lot, uh, and uh, I don't think it requires any further explanation. Maybe if it does, then please put it down in the comments section. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video. It helps with the algorithm of YouTube. And uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much. Goodbye.